Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, in the last episode, I'd begun planning out and building my downtown part of the city where we have our first high-density residential area. We've got our university and roads that can support a high volume of traffic, as well as an intercity bus terminal. Now, they've got some services, though not everything yet, and I'll be looking to slowly add to the area over time as we look to push that population to 11,000, which is going to promote our town to that of a small city. So let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the big town of Swords, soon to be the small city of Swords, if everything goes to plan. Now, just before we actually hop into things and get re-familiarized with the current situation, I thought I would just address this giant black stain that's on our community right here, and that's effectively slightly out of bounds. The world border is just here for us currently with the tiles, and a fire was raging outside of that area and blew into the village here. But firefighting services have been on top of things, they managed to put everything out. None of the buildings are getting too terribly affected, they're not burning down fully. But I am noticing just pockets of forest fires are constantly spreading in and around the town. In fact, just even a second ago there was a house on fire over there, there was another one on fire down here. So firefighting is going to be something I want to improve. Oh yeah, actually we can see there it is, they've just put that one out. They're on top of things, gotta give them the credit though. There's always like two or three firefighters there on top of things before these houses actually have to be demolished, you know, if they get completely burned down. So if you can't respond to fires fast enough, that's when issues happen. That's the way everything works. If the, there's too much crime, the houses become abandoned. If you're not picking up the dead quick enough, they become abandoned. If they catch fire, they burn down and become abandoned, unless your services can handle it. So we want to get on top of that. Now to do that for forest fires, see, we have all of this natural forestry around us that can basically cause a fire hazard during our dry months of April, <laughs> apparently. Uh, so because of that, what you need to do is spot the forest fires before they even hit the city, right? We need a fire watch tower, and then we'd actually need a medical, so I always call it a medical helicopter, I don't know why, fire helicopter depot to send out firefighters to get the fires that you can't reach via road, right? They can go and dump water onto the forests or whatever, and just prevent it actually reaching the city. So that's going to be a goal of mine as we tend to grow and expand just a little bit further. Oh, unfortunately, we're actually getting close to nighttime here, so I'll just speed up time a little bit. So, just to do a little recap on the current situation, money sort of fluctuates up and down. Uh, currently, we're making a bunch of goods in here. It's set to fill, but sometimes we're pulling from that and, and delivering it to the different commercial centers that need them. And that gives me a little temporary cash injection. Also, with our industry, our farming industry now built up to level 5, we're making a lot of animal products and crops and anything, any excess goes off map and gets sold as well. Now, I'm going to be looking to expand this out a little bit as well. The current situation in terms of population is we're at about 10,100. The next population milestone, like I said, is 11,000. Unemployment is 17%, but we have 1,000 available jobs. So you might be like, well, what's going on? Why aren't these people taking the jobs that they otherwise should? Well, basically, it's because of education. So education... We've just built a new high-capacity elementary school up here in our new downtown area. We have a high school up there as well, a high-capacity high school. And then we have our Institute of Technology, aka our university, up here as well. There's 1,500 people eligible for it, apparently. But there's only... If we were to check who's inside of it... What the hell is going on? Oh, I'm selecting the district name, sorry. Uh, there's only 300 people inside of it. Now, I'm a little confused. I don't know... If it's just all these people can't be bothered traveling that far, we had set up a bus route to help them do that. I'm just going to change the music really quickly to some nighttime music. We had set up this bus route that was just hanging around here. And uh, it's like our intercity bus route, and I've refined it just slightly. So Victoria Square, let's turn on the district names actually. So Victoria Square is this area here. We have some of our apartment blocks in there. We're finally picking up the dead, which is good. And we made the articulated bus route that's going to take people from out here and bring them all the way over to the intercity bus station. So I've refined this route just slightly. And what I mean by that is we used to, I was kind of telling the bus to stop in multiple places, but no more. It now only has two stops. This bus literally is doing one job. It's collecting people from Victoria and bring them down to what I've now called Carlo Valley. So a little bit of Darren lore is I went to college in Carlo. I went to the Institute of Technology in Carlo. And uh, some people were asking in the comments, they were saying, like, I don't think an uh, Institute of Technology is the same as a university. Uh, you can't get a BSc degree there, like a Bachelor of Science and stuff like that. You can. At least in my experience, you can. I did. <laughs> so um, I had a four-year course in computer programming, and I got a BSc in that. I can't even remember what how I did in the degree, but I got what I needed after doing the course. And I actually got into Dublin City University, but I chose to go there. 
um, because it had a more, it was kind of it leaned towards more doing um, games. Specifically, whereas in DCU, Dublin City University, it was like computer applications a bit more generalized. Uh, so I wanted to be specific. So in my view, they are the same. I'm, sh I'm sure obviously they're not the exact same. One is more a college and one is a university, but you can get the same level of education there depending on what you do. And in the game, that's certainly the case anyway. So I just thought I would address that because some people were wondering. Anyways, so I've simplified the route, right? So we see all these people waiting here at the first um, spot and that's because they're waiting on those buses to come around. So this is the green route. So if we just have a look at it really quickly, it's just called green at the moment. Maybe I'll name these be a bit better because we can see the colors already. So maybe they should have a bit more of a specific name. But we can see now it's just two stops. So I had had it stopping in multiple places around here, excuse me. <clears throat> I thought I would simplify it because ultimately these, this is a, a bus link between two places and then we have our smaller routes that will pick up from these other places. And the same goes for in here, right? We have the blue line, the yellow line, other lines that are going to cross over on these same stops, which you can see so people can get out and make their change. Now, this does look like a pretty good location for a bus terminal um, as well so that we could just pull in here. So effectively, these are two little shops that we could just, you know, remove. I'd like to see what you think about that before I commit to anything. So, is it a compact bus station? A bus station is really, really large, actually. But the compact bus station would fit in there pretty nicely. I think it has, like, one grid space either side. And that comes with, if we just had a look at it somewhere out uh, here. Does it show me? It looks like it's got about four or five, maybe six different stops. Which is plenty for this area, because we've only got two overlapping routes. Maybe a third eventually, you know? How many people are traveling on this, by the way? We just have to wait for them to pick up. They've got zero on it as well. It is the morning, so fresh buses will be rolling out in the morning. So just waiting for this one to move on. So this is the reason, by the way, you'd want this. Is because there's a train of buses stacked behind each other. And, you know, they're in their own lane. They're not really blocking anyone's traffic. But if you wanted to cut down on that, you could have a station that they pull into and then pull out. Rather than kind of bunching up on each other like this. So let's see, we got 15 on the line. It's actually not that much. I was in my testing, I was kind of looking around at things and I was seeing that these would be generally quite full actually. So maybe the next one that comes along will have a bit more. Oh, it might take a while. Yeah, there's the train of buses. I mean, they do actually try to leave the gap between the junctions as well. Or they're supposed to. <laughs> I guess they... Okay, never mind. Our bus drivers are crazy and we all know that. I want to address something else to do with roads in a second, but I just want to see how much are we going to really pick up here. Now, I know you can do this, right? We can flick to this view, and we'll see everyone who's green. So that gives us a good indication of who's about to get on. So there we go. Budget's just on seven vehicles at the moment, and we can see 149 people are waiting down at the actual terminal. So there's tons of people waiting here for the first buses to kind of get here. Now, buses do run during the night, but they... um. More of them come out during the morning and the day. So there we go. We have 75 passengers on this one. That's good to see. And then this is going to be an intercity bus route. So that's bringing in four people. Now, I've noticed four people. These four people could be tourists. They could be people that are actually moving in for the first time as well. That seems to be what an intercity bus station is capable of doing. It is a way to not have to have everyone coming in off of this, you know, one tight highway all the time. Because they have to go here and all the way around to get up to here. I know it's not logistically. It doesn't really make any sense right now. That's just going to be the way it is until I can expand the city out. So we're just going to have to wait a little while. Now, if it gets overbearing, then we'll do something about it. I'll either just unlock the tile <laughs> through the mods or uh, build a, a, the bridge to kind of separate and get another highway up this way. But for now, the idea is that if we take this tile and this tile, these two, we have highway access here and we can pump a more direct line straight into the kind of heart of the downtown area. So uh, as it were. All right. So let's see all these people getting on and off. So our, our, just so you know, the purple line is kind of carrying people around university and to the residential area here in the downtown. It's kind of like the downtown line. And then this one is going to dump 75 people out and then loads instantly with 75 people as well. And we're going to see all these people now ferrying out, moving to where they need to go. The next one has 40 on it. Look at all these people. So where are you guys heading? Unemployed, going home. Eh, going home. Some of them are going to the drugstore to where they work, probably. But I just thought I would show this area because it's nice. It's nice seeing the amount of people that we are actually moving already. Now, people had also mentioned that maybe it would be good to get a metro going. I do like the idea of that. You could have, and I left room here. It's like we could have a metro stop right here next to the intercity bus link and then bring it straight along into Victoria Square. So you could have it going kind of underground, right, along the bus road. Just goes underneath here 
and comes out and kind of like delivers people here in a nice curve or whatever. And you could then have it, you know, oh, it depends what, how big we get, but move around this way and kind of circle it to have another one that kind of loops around in a circle or something. I, haven't re I don't know, but I'm just saying it is a potential reality that we do that. But for now, I think we're totally fine with the bus service. It seems to kind of do the job. What I would like to see is more people going to college, though. So we're up to 310. So, of course, you do have to wait for people to actually graduate, right? So we have our high school here, or sorry, our elementary school here, 300 people in it. Once those 300 are out, then hopefully they progress up to the high capacity high school, 465, and then we get our students, 312. So that leads me all the way back to the population metrics we were looking at earlier. If we just wait, I am confident that unemployment will go down. The reason that we have unemployment is because there's a lot of jobs that are require a high level of education and we just don't have that many people going to university yet. Also, we have to wait for them to graduate. So when these 300 people graduate, a lot of them will take those jobs. So there we go. Anyway, quite the long discussion there at the beginning. The other thing, I, as I mentioned, we saw around the place is that the, um, the healthcare budget is tied directly into death care, right? So the cemetery is a healthcare building. And because our budget is set quite low for it at 60%, we don't have many hearses moving out, and obviously they have a long way to go to get all the way out here. So it might behoove us, as we can see the dark patch moving away now, to put down another graveyard maybe closer to that area. So I was thinking actually somewhere like here on this um, two-lane road might be a good place for it. So let's do that. I don't think they mind being close to one. And it's sort of temporary until we can get the... I always want to say incineration plant, the crematorium, but that's 16,000 population you need for it. So let's just grab this road. We'll turn on zoning for it because it didn't have zones and then tell it to upgrade on this side, please. That's strange that it's leaving a gap there, but it is. So there's not much I can do about that, but let's just get this building. Yeah, we can just pop it down right there. Maybe we could raise that a bit, because it seems like it's sunken into the ground. Oh, it won't let me raise it, actually. I wonder why. I don't know. Um, it doesn't really matter, anyway. If I need to raise it later, I can do that. So, we just need another one here so that some hearses can roll out and kind of take care of the, this part of the community before eventually we want to move this or put it somewhere where it makes more sense. Uh, but until we fill everything out, there's I just don't want to be any permanent with where we place that kind of thing just yet. Alright, anyways... Let's see, what are we gonna do? So we've got a good demand for residential, still some demand for commercial, and more demand for industry. So the demand for industry is because there's actually a decent amount of demand for uneducated jobs. So we could actually expand out the farms maybe even further. Um, I'm thinking about getting into oil as well soon. So there's oil deposits and stuff out here and in the water. Now I don't think you can get the water oil until you level up your oil industry to tier five. So we'll need to keep uh, set up extractors and a little business here for a while, and then we can do it. I can actually expand already if I want to. In fact, let's just have a look. Yeah, there's a little bit of oil in the coastline, not much. A little bit there. I might put down a little extra oil along the coastline for our industry. Remember, I removed a bunch in here, so I feel okay just putting the equivalent amount here on the shoreline. Maybe. I haven't decided that, but that would allow us to get the industry up and running, and then once we level it up, we can move it out. Because you do actually consume the oil. It does go away. So it can be kind of difficult to bring that industry up to the required amount agricultural industry is great because you just need fertile land and even if you don't have fertile land you can still build what you need to uh okay so let's um extend these roads out just bring it straight out for a second what i'm thinking is just to break it up have it look a bit more visually interesting is if we got these ones uh, yeah i need to just check how, how wide they are across so we'll count so it's, um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 between roads. Okay, we can go along like this, even though we don't have to with this one in particular. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we have to actually have to come out this way. If my math is right. Which I have no doubt it is. Um, so, we'll grab one of these guys. These bigger crop farms that we've unlocked in the last episode. Small, medium, and large. And if we just face them out this way... Ah! My math was not right. I was one tile off, apparently. Okay. Okay. 
Now, what's the resources like below? Yeah, it's great. Super fertile. Loves it. And we can put another one in. We just need to extend it further. So that's going to be four. So four of these is about 45,000 units of crops per week. A lot of demand on water. About 2,400 water. So we'll see how that goes. But we have to actually feed it. All right, so let's bring this along here and just send it out. There you go, you've got your water. Uh, so yeah, why not? We'll make them look like potatoes. Whoops. And maybe to break it up, a green a greenhouse at the end there? I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right, that should be good enough. And we can always keep extending further out down, down that way if we need to. So ideally, these guys are going to be heading towards these places to store their crops. We do now have large grain silos, so we can try to use some of those. A large grain silo, boom. Maybe again. Well, that's on the op opposite end, so maybe somewhere like here. So I'm just thinking, as they come out that road, they'd have to cut across. It's very awkward to do that. I'd say maybe sticking him in this side is probably makes a bit more sense. Put two big ones in there. What do we got? Large barn. Again, just for crops. Farming industry, raw materials, crops. And is this the same thing? Grain silo, which is crops. I don't know why there's two different buildings, but I guess it's maybe just for variety. 50,000 capacity. Sorry, 500,000 capacity. And this has 600,000 capacity with 13 potential trucks. This has 10 potential trucks. Power, and it has water and power upkeep, whereas this also does as well. Yeah, okay. Fine, we'll just leave it at that. Leave it at these two. I noticed, by the way, this mod, the mod that balances industry to work with the realistic population mod has gotten an update, and it now has a little button here that we can actually configure things. I haven't changed it at all, but they've basically given you the ability to lower down the amount of trucks that are generated if there's too many, so maybe we'll use that in the future because these places can get pretty packed, but I'm not sure if we need it yet. So we'll just leave it as is. These guys are now just going to be producing crops, and then we can have room for maybe more buildings, more slaughterhouses, or milking parlors, or whatever else, you know? But that's going to just provide a few jobs. Not not many. Uneducated and educated. Interesting. Well, I'd say actually then, okay, we could go with a little extra industry. Why the hell not? So another slaughterhouse. If I was to check what kind of jobs you guys have, I'm looking for less, more lower education, you know? So a flour mill, for instance, what do we got in here? Yeah, it still actually has a lot of like the higher tier jobs. The milking parlor seems pretty good. 30, 25, 10, and 5. Uh, maybe slaughterhouse is the best then. It's 30 on the edge. It's only 10 and 5 for well-educated and highly. So actually, you know what? We'll just go with another slaughterhouse. Let's do it. Another two. So one that can fit right here. And another that can go right there. Now, you need crops. I might actually just move you and face you out facing the opposite direction. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not. Just realized, put that on normal as well if we can. Yeah, so the idea being that if they're getting stuff, I mean, they could be getting stuff for anywhere. I suppose it's not really up to me to control. Yeah, we'll just leave them, keep them on the busier road. Okay, fine, that's fine. Let's just let time play. Let's just fix this up. There we go. Okay, well, it's a lot more jobs, so we should see industry fall a little bit, and hopefully more of the uneducated will take those jobs. Now, I've raised, by the way, in between episodes, the education budget. I had that quite low as well. Um, so you might be thinking like, oh, you know, why wouldn't you raise that more? It's because a lot of the elementary schools are not at capacity. Um, so if we have a look at this elementary school, we have 938 eligible right now. The capacity is 2300. If we look at the different spots where there are schools it's at 115 this one's at 130 so it's like yeah you know we could almost double these up if we really wanted to if we were to check then the metrics we can see oh yeah sorry that's what i was going to say we can see how many have graduated around here all the nice like blue households so a lot of people have graduated from elementary school there decent amount from here although not that much and then it kind of starts to get really bad and then really bad out here because it hasn't had enough time to have people um, 
graduate just yet. Sounds funny saying graduate from elementary school, but I guess technically you do. Now, I just got distracted there for a second because I was going to do something else. The public library also just provides a boost around it. So users can only go up to 100, but they don't graduate from it. It's just the people that use it get a little boost. It should allow them to go faster. Ah, I do remember one thing. Robin Hills, policies, education boost. Let's go. Prioritize education over working. All right, so there you go. Uh, school is not out in the old policy, by the way, in the old Victoria Square. That policy is now gone. So there's no more policy that says school is out. So everyone is encouraged to go. Just regularly. Robin Hills is now exclusively enc encouraged to go, even more so, right? So it says, boost the education budget and make young adults automatically choose education over working. Prioritize education over working for young adults. Increases education budget by 25%. Now, it increases the education budget. I've just put it down in a place where there's only an elementary school. I suppose why not just apply that everywhere, you know, just in case. So education boost there in Carlo. And Carlo needs to extend out. Actually, people did mention that in the comments. There we go. So Carlo Valley now has two different policies going on. Education boost. And wasn't there... Yeah, there we go. For profit education. The building upkeep is reduced and the happiness is slightly reduced. Just because it's not that full yet. So I feel like it's a bit much to be paying so much for it. 316. 500 now. So it is, it is climbing. That's the important thing. All right, let's just speed up time. We can start to zone some extra areas. Why the hell not? Let's go with high density in this block here. Let's go with... I'm going to chance it one more time. We'll put down another high capacity... Uh, sorry, high density commercial zone right there. Let's see if we grow another building. Um, I think these guys are kind of desperate for another more commerce. So I'm going to try this as well. I think I was going to say, like, you guys can let me know about the terminal. Forget it. I'm going to put one down. Why not? And what we'll do instead in its place is actually make this maybe like high density as well. So a bit more high density in this area because we're shifting these buildings. We're going to get rid of them. We'll get that bus. Compact bus station. There she is. Uh, sure. <laughs> Oh my god, red sky at night. So, on the bus routes then, I think what we'll have to do is, maybe I'll just wait for this bus to clear its area. Alright, there we go. All the people coming out, by the way, are the people that were in that um, building. So, here's our stop. We want to move it inside. Oh, I just realized. Do buses drive along the back of that? Oh yeah. They pop out the back. That's weird. How do they get in though? They go in from the back? Or do they just go in from that side there on the right? Looks like maybe they're from the right. I don't know. I guess we'll see. So let's see how this operates then. Just move this line in. That's what I was going to do. Yeah, they go in that way. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so your bus route's in there now. Simple as that. So they, they do travel along this way. They go in, they come out. So that, that's fine. I thought maybe they were going to try and move up this road and go in that way. I thought that'd be like, no, really don't want that to happen. Uh, there's still room inside there for a little bit. Can we move that one over? Good. So it's actually only got four four little routes, which is perfect for what I, my use is. So that's totally fine. wonder could I use the surface painter here? I'll just color this in. Yeah, a bit better. It might be nice to put something there eventually. All right, so we'll see the next buses come along. Yeah, look at them. They're all going to wait at their nearby stop now. <laughs> That's great. Love it. They're like, oh, this is much more convenient. So where's our next articulated bus? I can't remember if it comes down from this direction or not. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, wow, not many. I think there's only ever three out at night. So it's, it really isn't that many. We could increase that if we need to. So let's just follow the route now because it has changed. So, yeah, it just goes in, out, and then it just travels straight along here. It takes a left. So I've also updated the lanes because um, someone brought up in the comments, they were saying, like, your lanes wouldn't make any sense, at least in a real-world setting, because I was changing it so that these this bus lane could turn left because I was, you know, lamenting at the fact that your bus is getting the wrong lane. They're traveling along the middle lane, like, the whole road. And I'm like, use the bus lane, for God's sake. 
Now, part of me was right to think that, because it is the game does misjudge it sometimes, but another part of me was wrong, because of course, if you're in this lane and you want to take a left, you will smash into this lane here in the middle if you do that. So a bus has to come out to let people know that it's going, going across. So I've changed the lanes and how they work a little bit from their default. By default, the left lane here would normally go forward or left. This one would only go forward, and this one would only go forward. So I've changed it just a little bit. I've said now, if you're in the left lane, you have to go left. If you're in the middle lane, you can go left or straight. So buses will now m use that middle lane to turn left, safely knowing that the car on their left has to also be doing the same thing. It, it's a little safe. You still kind of would have to, I suppose, judge it a bit, but you know you're not going to smash into it going straight. You just have to make sure you don't like clip into it when you're doing the turn, I suppose. Um, so I'm not saying it's perfect or anything, but it should keep flow a lot better. It should mean that they use their bus routes a lot better for most of the, the road. Um, but if we get really high volume traffic, then it's like, well, maybe we'd have to change that rule somewhere down the line because you might want to be using both lanes to go forward as well. I'm, I'm not too sure. Just thought I would talk about it just really briefly there. But ultimately what we should see is buses using that right lane far better. And then shifting over if they're going to take that left turn. So one of the bus routes does come in this way, I think, into the university here. So we'll see them just making that switch out to this side and then turning just before they do. And the purple lane will be a good indicator of that. All right, how many people you got? 51. That's a good number. Pretty good. Nice to see the cop car using the... Not a big fan of people parking right here, by the way. Can we um, change that? Maybe we should... They have parking built in. I don't know if they can get to it or not. Uh, so yeah, we can use TMP just to maybe disable parking here. Don't be doing that. Just right there is a bad idea. Only 12 on that one. Because that would indicate to me that that bus was way too close to its friend in picking people up. Oh, 62 people on this one. All right, let's just follow this just for a minute. I'm just curious to see how it goes. Remember, we did just zone an area, so it's going to take a little while to fill up. Get some more people into the city. 233 are coming in per week currently. What's the speed limit on this road? 60. Are you doing 60? It doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it's 60 the whole way. And there you go, you switched, and now you're going to make your turn. It's 80 on this road, so away you go. Sixty-two people as well. Now, it's shifted over to the left, and I assume it's taken a right. So that's not good, is it? Excuse me. Let's see. The roads say you weren't supposed to do that. If you're in that left lane, you're only supposed to go left. How dare you, sir? So, you know, buses just, it's, people just ain't, ain't behaving. Now, I never changed that. That's default. I didn't do anything to this road. <laughs> I suppose if you really wanted to get granular, you could, like, connect these lanes and say, no one's ever doing this again. Something like that. I don't know. Well, actually, I suppose you'd probably just want to do this. Let them go straight. I don't know. I'm not going to lane connect this road. It's fine. But I was just saying, like, maybe that's what you could do if you want to get really granular with it. Um, now, they've actually got traffic lights here. I don't think they need that just at this moment. Punk. There you go. Free flowing. Maybe the bus is doing it because it's a big bus and it needs that wide area. Pro probably not, but it could be. <laughs> Alright, these places are leveling up as well, using some some more of that commercial. 31 people on the line. 21 people. So it's interesting that this bus is still going to stay on this side of the road. Is that a good thing or not? Should it pull in there? I don't know. There's only one stop. There's not an overlapping one, so you can let me know on that for sure. Hey! Oh! <laughs> That's kind of cool. Little individual buildings popped up here. I didn't think they'd make use of the space like that. And it's like for fuel. I mean, that looks so weird. I, I think I would have to say no. It's kind of a cool idea, though. If it was a different type of building, maybe. Like this little corner store being there. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I suppose you could use something like Rico to pop down your own buildings, right? As people have mentioned before. No one actually fixed the... Or not fixed the... Um, Oh, crap, the noise pollution is a lot here. Our citizens are sick. They're not feeling too well because of noise pollution. Make sure there's healthcare available.
Well, there's healthcare right there. Hmm. That's an interesting problem. I didn't know they could actually get sick from noise pollution. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Anyway, what I was going to say is people didn't actually um, give me any solution to the problem that I was having. Crap, I can't really remember. Oh, yeah, which is if I put down a building, is there any way to put down like all the extra bits that come along with it? Like, I can put down this building or this one, but I don't get any of the car parking spaces, the bushes, the tiles. You know, I don't get the entire prefab. Um, so it would be good to know if that's actually possible. I'm just going to make it all high density there. Just see if we get along okay with that. And just get rid of this as well. That tiny corner store just became a bigger one because <laughs> it leveled up. Alright, we'll see how we get along with that. What's the uh, unemployment at? 17. It's going down actually a little bit. Have we got anyone to graduate yet? Nobody has graduated from university just yet, I don't think. High school? Still not up here anyway. And elementary school? Hey, we've got one! Which I assume is graduated. Yeah, must be, right? Good. Although it's, I guess it's like faded out because there's so many people in here. So it might take a while. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, I didn't, I'm such an idiot. I didn't even know you could actually check the building to see. So 26 people are educated, four are well educated, 30 uneducated. That's cool, yeah. 380 students in the high capacity elementary school here. Nice. All right, what else do we need in the city then? <laughs> Let's just, I guess, let's just get more aggressive at zoning. I want to hit that 11,000 by the end if I can. So, maybe we could do um, further residential zoning on the inside here. We've got all the space to use as well. We've got all this space to use. Same within here. All right, more houses are popping up. Now, I might build roads through these areas again at some point just to expand it further. And there's all this area to kind of expand into as well, and this one. This was just our starting residential area. And how's the uh, water situation? So water, electricity, sewage, all good. Garbage getting a little tight. We can turn off crematorium, crematorium availability. Average health might be a kind of an interesting vital. Average health. Employment, 82. Health is pretty good, actually, considering. I'm surprised it's not better. I felt like I've got healthcare everywhere, really. I suppose there's all these extra little buildings you can build, like a sauna, <laughs> to give people a increased happiness. Medical helicopter depot, sports hall and gymnasium. That's what we built inside the city, and a community pool. Community pool might be nice. Community pool is a pool open for all citizens and tourists. It's not only fun, but it raises the health of people a little bit. Yeah, it's got like a little radius around it. Some community pool action. So it's just an outdoor pool. Yeah, it feels like down by the coast or something that would make a bit more sense. Somewhere near without a bay view. Hey, we did it. We hit a small city. There we go. Level 6 unique buildings. We can now build our own train, a monorail, and cable cars. Small business enthusiasts. So we have different policies to encourage certain types of buildings or to prevent high-rises altogether. All our monorails and cable stuff. New buildings. A train station, cargo train terminal. That's the important one. Metro tram hub. So interestingly, there's combination buildings, right? So we have like the metro to certain other things. Multi-level metro hub, metro multi-platform end station, train station, monorail, etc., etc. Yeah, so you can look at connection buildings, high capacity university. Interesting. Metro intercity bus hub. That is effectively what I was just going to build anyway. Oh, we can build a basketball arena. I'll have to look through some of these things. So this, I was going to put a metro next to it in the future, but you could actually get a building that does both which is one of these, right? Public transport hubs. Bus, intercity bus hub, which is huge. Metro intercity bus hub. So that would just be like what we have, but with the added metro rail underneath it. That would be nice. Slam it down right around there. Then people can just come out of the building on its own. Trams, tram connection points as well. Yeah, kind of tempted to do that. 
Level 6 unique buildings. I have to check those as well. I haven't actually looked at them. A yoga garden for healthcare benefits. Horseshoe Stadium Hydro Power Plant. Large underground metro. Access the underground metro and connect the city's transportation network with four tracks crossing at different depths. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> and a basketball arena. An indoor sporting arena featuring a basketball court. Let's have a look at that one. And what category would that be in? Is it in unique buildings? It's an education building. What? Maybe it's part of one of the campus things. Oh yeah, placing this building inside a campus area enables basketball varsity sports team. It can be placed anywhere. So I don't, I've never used the campus DLC. I do have it. I got all the DLCs for this playthrough. I, I do plan on using these things eventually. I was thinking of building a second university out this way when we expand there as a competing university to this one. So this is like the Institute of Technology. The one out here will be the campus one. That was at least the plan, so. Jesus Christ, this is a big building, isn't it? Holy shit. It's huge. It's, I've actually got no plot of land where this would make sense. Now, it did say if you place it within... But I'm assuming you can just place it without and it's a visitor building and stuff, yeah? It seems way too big right now, though. I don't know if I'd really need that. Maybe at the back of the Intercity bus hub it would actually kind of make sense. Let me know what you think. Quite curious. Let's check as well just the level 6 buildings now. Oh my god. A Cathedral of Plentitude. Yeah, it's huge. It's actually, it's actually not that big, but it's tall. A stadium. Wow, the stadium is actually smaller than the basketball thing. So what does this look like? Bring the excitement of a sports game into the city by building a stadium. Requirement for building the space elevator. A modern art museum. This would be kind of cool near the Institute of Technology. Oh, fits like really nicely there. People can drive by it on their busy road. Or you could put it right in the same plot to make it look quite cool. It's got some noise pollution. Requirement for building the fusion plant. We have a central park. It's huge, huge, huge park. And it has connections and stuff. What's that? Like a little road or something that goes between it. Recreational activities for citizens. Hmm. And the statue of Coloss Col Colossalus. Oh. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, cool. Lots of neat little buildings we can check out. All right, the demand for residential is kind of starting to fall. Industry is growing and commercial is growing again. The, the commercial buildings that are here seem to be okay. They've got 32 jobs available though. That's a lot, a lot of educated jobs available. Let's expand two more. It's maybe a little early, but I'm gonna do it. Sorry that there wasn't actually much gameplay in this episode. I know I was talking a lot, but I, I kind of almost promised from here out we can just start zoning and expanding and building out roads a bit more. But there was, I just felt like there was a lot to talk through still. I need to kind of play around with how this place is going to expand, you know? We need more people on this side and this side. How's our traffic, actually? It's been a while. 83? That's good. I mean, it is dead of night, but yeah, it's good. This road's increasingly busy. As it's connecting these kind of neighborhoods together, this commercial in this area. But we can bypass that once we connect the four-lane road to itself once we expand. I think we'll do that in the next episode and maybe expand this tile, start building out the oil industry. That could be cool. Then we'll get more unique factories that can combine some of the products that we make here with some oil products as well, potentially. I don't know if there's much crossover between agriculture. There is between forestry, though. How are you guys doing now in this place? 879 workers. That's pretty good. Still room for 200 more. 2,000 profit currently, although that fluctuates like wild. Yeah, 240 jobs available. There are... Wow, for well-educated, we're almost even. 146 to 150. And for highly educated, 69 over under 77. That's excellent. What we're lacking, excuse me, is actually just that in-between, that educated category, tier 2 is lacking 200 jobs. That's interesting. So it's almost like we need to remove <laughs> high schools. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, get your graduate diploma from elementary school, then you're educated and you're good to go. But if you get any more educated than that, it's we can't fill your slot right now. Robin Hills. 
Should we give them yoga? <laughs> Quite tempted to see what that looks like. Let's just search it, because I have no idea where that's going to be. Inside of here. There we go. A little yoga garden. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Something along, like, near the, uh, the school or whatever actually wouldn't be... How's the radius on this? It's actually quite big. Let's get a little nuts. I'm going to put a yoga garden right here in, across from the park. Destroying some houses along with it, unfortunately. Another one's popping up in between. Very modern. <laughs> they love it. Would that have actually fit in here? Yeah, but it would just cross over into those buildings as well. So we'll leave it where it is. It is tempting to maybe do something like this. Get this road, bring it in. Without destroying anyone if we can. Yeah? Let's just continue that path. Rejoin the path. Alright, so the path is in there. So the, I'm just wondering, would this look better if we just tilted it inside here? Oh yeah, that's good. I think that's better. So it is tucked away, it's pretty deep in there, but at least this is the room to just grow naturally again. I'm gonna knock this building down. Rezone this as high density. Let them figure that out. But that's a, a bit more organic now, I think. If I brought that in there, that would yeah, that would ruin things. Let's just leave it where it is. You can, I think, with node controller, change it. So it's at an end right now. If you go more options, people had mentioned, like, you can make it a roundabout if you really want to. And you can make it thinner as well. Just leave it where it, where it was. What does shift do? Shift it out. Shift it in. Rotate. Yeah, I guess I'll just leave that. I don't really know how to bookend this road, to be quite honest. What might look kind of a bit more natural, though, is we connect this up here. And then we add a node in. Need to add another node. Something like that, you know? I don't know. The path goes along the road a bit better now. Just even slightly. And it kind of looks like more more like it's meant to be one area. Alright. That's our yoga garden. Someone had said it'd be cool if there was like a way to get down on the ground and... Be, like drive your own car around here. I do think that'd be awesome. <laughs> Love to see that. Where are you off to? Amanda Gray, driving to a friendly neighborhood park. Well, she's there. All right, cool. What do we have to now? 11,111. 11, 11, 11. 30,000 in terms of the bank balance. How are we doing for this? This is actually almost full. That's just for fun. Empty that out. And then make a bunch of money. So, trucks, yeah, they've brought it down to 37. Bring it down further if you can. Nine trucks are in use. One truck isn't doing anything. Should we just leave it? There we go. 10 out of 10. So now you can go back to balanced, I guess. All right, we should expect to see a huge cash injection once all those trucks kind of sell the stuff. So the idea would be, now that we've unlocked the train terminal, this is the thing I was a bit confused on. Right at the end of the episode, but you might be able to help me. I don't know if it would really cut down on any traffic here. So, for instance, when these want to export their goods, they drive out and they get onto the highway and they go. That's all they need to do. Just one turn. It's perfect. They're really close to the exit point of the map. But you could, now that we have trains... That's tram. There it is, trains. We could build a cargo terminal on the road here that they deliver to instead and it just goes via rail out. Would that be a good idea? I don't see anything wrong with that. I just kind of think maybe it's a bit pointless considering they're right next to the road anyway. 
you know, it's 1,400 upkeep, so it's, it's not cheap. So I'd just love to know that. Build a cargo terminal to allow trains to carry goods and raw materials. They can operate inside the city or without an outside connection. Build stations and connect them with tracks before using the train line. So the interesting thing would be, I guess the benefit would be that they don't have to bring goods in. They could just bring them directly via rail, some of them anyway, and then get out. But mm, unless it's good, goods for here, that's that's great. If it was goods for like in here and it came in via rail, they'd have the same problem of having to just go around the roundabout. And it would actually cause congestion, not solve it. So... That's something I guess I'm not too sure. But maybe you guys could weigh in on that. We could also just build a regular train station. Travels, tourists to travel to and from the, the, sorry, the city. Place the station and connect it with rails, yep. And then an elevated train station. Now, does that mean people take it to work? Doesn't say anything about that, it says from tourists. They travel to and from the city. So you wouldn't want it to be in here, right? What I was also thinking of doing long term is you could build this railway out along the bottom of the map, curl it around up the north of the map, and connect it to the oil industry if we build it up there. That was a plan of mine, so I might do that eventually too. Alright, money's good. I don't think we've seen the jump yet. It takes a while. How's, um, I just want to check one last time. Traffic. Traffic is good. We're totally clear on these places. Everything's free flowing. They're lacking workers, so you don't really want to build any more than that. There's 200 potential workers here, so that's... Some of these buildings could just be thick and take quite a lot. Buses are carrying people to and from high school, or it's our university, which is good. 288 there, 594. So this is grown by about 200, so that's good. Like, new people are getting in there all the time. And 418 here. So, yep, we're seeing good numbers. It's going to take a little while for that graduation rate to go up. High school's got nothing up here yet. And university, we're seeing pockets of people that have gone to university already appearing, which is nice. And we could just check one last time. This route now has 148 passengers, it says. 8 kilometers, weekly passengers, 143 residents, 5 tourists, car trips save 20%. 182 people waiting at this stop right now. We're coming in with a full bus load. 75. Next one is 75 as well. That's what you like to see. Big transfer of people. Buses are struggling to get in though. That's an inner city bus. That just parks wherever it wants by the way, so that's... Clearly just after overlapping with my own thing. But look at all the people. great. <laughs> Just big blobs of people all coming out at the same time. They're all going towards the residential. Very few actually going towards commerce Commerce right now. They're going to start needing traffic lights and stuff because these crosswalks are taking up a val precious um, road space. All right. That's going to have to be it. So let me know. A couple things I need you guys to let me know on. The train station. Uh, what do you think about doing oil? Getting this tile, the train station down here, the cargo terminal down here, more importantly. Metro, should we replace this with the hybrid metro slash bus route? And if so, make a case for it. Because it could just put down a metro thing right next to it. I don't really know the necessary need in combining it, although I guess it's kind of cool to be able to do that. Um, Alright, I think it's going to be it. Oh, that's something I actually wrote down and I forgot to do. I wanted to set up postal service here, but I forgot to do that. We can do that next time. So postal service out here would be good. Um, yeah. Alright, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.